So uh, I want to jump into everything, but I want to yeah. remind everybody that in November 21, it was you that first explained the metaverse to me. I didn't get it. I had been in the blockchain space heavily for like six months and I was having a hard time getting my head around it. You came remotely at the time and you really brought everybody up to speed. So thank you for that. You came back a year later when you were here at Token 2049, right when FTX dropped. And oh, you yes. were trying to process all of this kind of, uh, you call it kind of like the crypto Wall Street behavior. Yes. And we were processing that. Now we're forward another six or seven months. And I was wondering if you could tell me what is the state of the metaverse? Uh, you always blow my mind by reminding me that like 3.4 billion people play games. Mm -hmm. I know you said it, it, that gaming is the predominant form of culture for youth today. And I left my two boys this morning, they're five and six years old. And as I walked out of the house, they were playing games. Mm -hmm. And if they're not playing games these days, they're watching other people play games. Absolutely. And it's not because I told them to or asked them to. And it reminds me, that's what I did as a kid too. And so yeah. I, I think it's easy to forget as adults sometimes how important gaming is and how maybe it represents the future of this entire Web3 space. So for people that don't understand that, how do you start that explanation? And where are we right now with Web3? So maybe let's talk a little bit about what we think of the open metaverse as a sort of primer, right? We think of the open metaverse as a space in which we have actual ownership, right? The whole concept of digital property rights. And there's a very big distinction, not to confuse it, with the metaverse as was defined by Facebook, right? Which a lot of people still think it is. So they think of the metaverse as something that's, you know, a 3D virtual reality with immersive experiences, and you put something on your head and suddenly sort of you teleport into the metaverse. That's not the metaverse. That is an interface to the metaverse. But actually what you're experiencing is really a alternate reality that is real to you because the virtual world is effectively already real to you. In Asia, for instance, where I live, uh, most of the time I would say, <laughs> depends where and I've been traveling a lot, people spend about nine hours on average a day online. Um, think about that. That basically most of your waking hours that you're online. When you're waking up, you know, I think the, st the study is that within the first 15 minutes, you grab your phone or you grab a digital device, where do you go? Yes, you might look at something on the phone, but you've already traveled into a virtual reality. So your time and attention is already there. But the distinction is that the open metaverse is one where we own our time, where we own our data, where we have property rights around it. That space, which is known as the open metaverse, which is powered by blockchain, is what we collectively call as part of Web3. Last year was an over $30 billion economy. Now, um, just to put that in context, $30 billion economy is roughly, it's a bit bigger than the GDP of Iceland and Cyprus and you know, 100 other countries. The reserves of this open metaverse, which is basically community-owned treasuries, was about $12 billion. Now, $12 billion is roughly, is roughly smaller than the fiscal reserves of New Zealand. So what's happening is that there's an actual country that is already in the virtual econ economical space that's developing, where people are making real income, you know, being employed, you know, having actual capitalist opportunities that are developing from this, you know, many of them from developing countries that were unbanked, but also in places in Europe and in Asia and so on as they engage in these systems. All of this obviously is empowered by from banking infrastructure that is DeFi, right? And you know, last year DeFi was over a hundred billion dollars of basically reserves, if you will, that was locked in the financial ecosystem. It's come down a little. I think it's maybe sixty or seventy billion today. But you know, just to give you another comparison, you know, the the the, um, the I think the, the the Federal Bank of New Zealand has one hundred two billion dollars, for instance, right? So we're we're talking about national level economies that are basically building up from that, and that's the open metaverse, and that's only growing. One statistic that blows a lot of people's minds, because you know, to us NFTs are the representation of these digital property rights, as we have them in the physical world, is that it was $24 billion of sales of NFTs that happened in 2022. And what's really fascinating is that you know, there's only a small number of people, we're talking you know, max millions of people that participate in that space, but of that $24 billion, 90% of its value went to the creators and owners of these NFTs. Spotify, in that same year, only did $7 billion in royalties. But it serves hundreds of millions of users. All these users own nothing, so they got nothing. And the creators slash, really, if you think about them, publishers, pocketed you know, the remaining and then paid peanuts out to their artists, uh, you know, typically speaking. So that is you know, the state of this. So from our perspective, why would you exist in the Web2 paradigm where you're making literally 
pennies on the dollar when you should be receiving your fair share of value, which is what's happening in Web3. So that is the meaning of the open metaverse. And if you're not in it, then I think you're really sort of not seeing where the future is because virtual work, I think, is the future anyway. We're already working at home on a computer. I mean, we're not actually physically doing, at least in developed countries, physically doing physical labor anymore. So even though we're not thinking of ourselves as maybe virtual employment, actually, does it really matter that you're physically in this office in the same way? You're you know, remotely connecting with people, whether it's over Zoom or whether it's over Slack or whether it's over email. You're already a virtual being and you can be anywhere in the world and you conduct your work. And that's really just the next step of engagement where you then go from sort of this sort of quasi, I'm sort of in the physical world, but I'm also having this interface into basically full immersion into that space where you know, all value is generated from this. And this is why Web3 and specifically crypto is so fascinating. Because the medium of exchange in the open metaverse is going to be entirely crypto. And the other thing that's fascinating, of course, is when you think about something like AI, which become these autonomous agents in these games, like with these NPCs and so on, what are they going to be dealing with? They're going to be transacting in crypto. They're not going to open a bank account and sort of, you know, do KYC in the traditional sense. They have to be authorized, but they're just basically going to go ahead and, and, and trade stuff over crypto. This paradigm of what's happening in the gaming world, with like you mentioned about your children, uh, last year, something like $100 billion was spent in Web2 gaming items. Right? And they were all trinkets, skins. They were cosmetic in nature. They were whimsical in nature. And really, if you think about that, that's a mirror of what we see in the physical world. When you think about us buying clothes and fashion, we're not buying them for utility. We're buying them because they make us look good or they make us feel good. It's part of our identity. We buy these things to represent meaning about us. And that element of culture in the physical world is really already happening in the digital world, but in the manner where we don't own anything. And that's why the open metaverse, Web3 and blockchain enables us to own these and create all the capital formation sort of possibilities that you know, wasn't, wasn't, um, wasn't possible before in, in Web2, but is now possible in Web3. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real. And he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four week crypto bootcamp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that Honestly, weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal, and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator, by far, was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.